Okay, what's the name of this molecule? You know, yeah. By the way, you might have noticed that this is one of the most important molecules in Chapter 22 as well. So now we're kind of starting to transition into the Chapter 22 material, which is a lot is about how to deal with uh, phenol here. That's a phenyl alcohol. Would we consider this a uh, activator or a deactivator? For the same reason as the nitrogen, because it can through resonance it can kick its electrons down. Strong, moderate, or weak? Very strong. Yeah, it's pretty similar to nitrogen. Not quite as strong as nitrogen because it's more electronegative but it's still a strong activator. Now, it turns out that an OR group is only moderate. This doesn't make any sense, uh, but it's true anyway. It seems like these should be about the same because they can both donate by resonance. In fact, if anything, this should seem like it's more electron donating because alkyl groups are more electron donating than hydrogens. Now remember that we think about hydrogen kind of as neutral in terms of electron donation. Uh -huh. um, so certainly alkyl groups, when we say that alkyl groups are electron donating, we mean that they're more electron donating than hydrogens. After all, which of these carbocations is happier? Well, doesn't that take for granted that hydrogens are not electron donating? So all along we've been taking it for granted that hydrogens are kind of neutral. They're not electron donating or withdrawing. Um, so it is kind of weird. This is only moderately activating. The second language book talks about it, and the guy, uh, the guy that wrote the second language book confesses he's never been able to figure out why this is. So anyway, we'll just have to memorize this. Usually we try to explain things, but we're just going to have to memorize that this is a moderate activator. Even though it seems like it should be at least as good an activator as the OH, it turns out that it's less activating. So we'll just have to have that memorized. So for the same reasons as for the nitrogen, sometimes we want to go from a strong activator to a moderate activator. So we need to know how to go back and forth between these two as well. I think we can use first term organic chemistry to say how to see how to go from the left hand to the right hand side here. Can you think of any way that we could go from the, to the forward reaction here? Add a base and then see some R group to the hydrogen. Excellent. Very good. We saw last term that alcohols can be deprotonated by bases. What was the purpose of deprotonating the alcohol? To make it a good nucleophile. Very good. We saw earlier that bases make things into good nucleophiles. And now we're done. That would give us this product here. What's the name of this reaction here? SN2. Yeah, so this is just going back to SN2 from the very beginning of the course. So it's not too hard to replace the H with an R. We can get rid of the H by using a base. And then this is nucleophilic enough to attack an apple halide. So just going back to the first term, we can see how to turn this into an OR group. OK, and I think we can use first term reactions to do the reverse reaction as well. Might be a little bit trickier. How can we get rid of the R and replace it with an H? Oh, SN1. This is a little bit harder. Let's think about what would happen here. So what would be happening first if we add this hydroiodic acid to this? What would be the first thing that happens? Uh, and I guess, sorry, we're adding it to this as the starting material now. So if we add this to this, what would happen first? It would protonate the OR. We know that strong acids like to protonate things. Now, how would these two things react? The I minus would attack the R. Good. What was the purpose of that first protonation step then? To make the R a better electrophile. And? A better leaving group. To make the oxygen a better leaving group. That's right. Just like a base we've learned to make things into better nucleophiles, we've learned that treating things with acid makes them more electrophilic and gives them better leaving groups. 
So what we've done now is um, we've turned the oxygen to, into a leaving group that's willing to leave this R over here. This would be either an SN1 or an SN2, depending on how substituted this carbon is over here. We don't, I haven't said how substituted this carbon is, um, but uh, maybe to make things more straightforward, let's say it was just a methyl group, then we would expect this just to be a normal SN2 reaction over here. And now we've gotten rid of the R group and we've turned this into the uh, phenol again. So now we can see how we can go back and forth between the, uh, the ether group over here and the alcohol group. Now the problem with that is you're probably right. If we add the acyl group, it'll probably mainly go in the para position. However, this is such a strong activator that there probably will be a, um, quite a bit of the acyl group in the ortho positions as well. So let's change it to OCH3 first. That's right. So this is a good case for moderating the activity. So then we can be confident that we really will get things. The first reagent will mainly just go in the para position. All right. So what do we need to add first? Base and CH3. These can be added in a single step. Um, the base will deprotonate this uh, alcohol, and then this will attack the alkyl halide, but they don't have to be added separately. So this should be a comma, not numbers. These can be added together. Now we've moderated the activating power. Remember, we didn't have a good explanation for why OR is less of an activator than OH. We just have to memorize that. But we have memorized that OR is less of an activator than OH. And then we can add next. That's that would be our Fido Crafts alkanoylation. Because of the steric, it's going to go up here. We know that the major product here will be in the para position, and we don't need to worry that um, there will be uh, an appreciable amount of ortho over here because we've made this oxygen less activating. So it's not going to be as easy to add things anymore. So we can be pretty sure that we're mainly only going to get the para attack here. And now add CL2 with the FeCl3 or How do we know that's going to end up at this ortho position? Because this is an O and P director still. And because this is a deactivator, it's not going to control the directing effects. This activator will dominate the deactivator. This is the other reason why we couldn't use OH. If this was an OH, we'd have to worry about two chlorines adding. If this was a strong activator, we'd have to worry about having things at both of the ortho positions. That's another issue when we have an O and P director. There's two different ortho positions. Well, if you only want one ortho to attack, it might help to have less of a good activator. All right, and then HCL. Okay, the book uses HI. I is a somewhat better nucleophile, and that gets our OCH3 back to the OH over here. I think last time we met, we were already starting to talk about these, uh, these right here. All right, well, I think that's a real good survey of the different uh, synthesis strategies here. Uh, I think you guys are already pretty good at these. However, um, there's one way in which this is a little misleading because 
I kind of told you what strategy we were going to use right before we did those problems. On the real test, you're not going to know what the right strategy is to use. So the real, real problems can be a little bit harder than this. So obviously, you want to do a lot of practice. So you get practice with thinking about what's the right strategy in your toolkit to use in the different cases. And of course, nothing, none of this will help you unless you've memorized all the reagents for going back and forth. So you need to make flashcards to memorize all the reagents in all these different cases. Oftentimes, I think that people confuse the reagents for the forward reaction with the ones for the reverse. So um, it's more worth your time to really learn that because I think you guys actually have the skills down pretty good already. So you deserve to get those points. All right. Well, I think um, we really did a good job then on Chapter 16. Shall we move on to Chapter 22? Now, we've already started talking a little bit about Chapter 2 already because, again, one of the big themes in Chapter 22 was phenol, and we started talking about some aspects of phenol here.